Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're looking at this Genmate. Genmate 800 watt two stroke generator. Look how tiny it is. It's wee. <laughs> Anyways, it's been sitting for quite a while. Don't know where it's been sitting, but it's been sitting. And uh, all I've done to this so far is remove the fuel cap to see that. Ooh, well, it's kind of gross. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen with this one. But what we're going to do first is take that fuel tank off. Should just be four bolts, two on each side. Get that tank off of there. And we'll see. I don't even want to describe to you what it smells like under there. No. We'll get you in the stand, get some tool gathered, and we'll see if we can resurrect this thing from the dead. Okay, so I've pulled the two screws off the front panel here. That gives you access to the air filter. Just a chunk of foam here. And the front of the carburetor. And I've looked in there with a flashlight and actually it looks not too bad. The fuel valve is off. We're not going to turn that on until we get the uh, we get the fuel hose off of the carburetor. And then we'll see, uh, we'll see if that crap has actually made it into the carburetor. I don't know if it has. But we're going to pull this front panel away from the front of the machine anyways a little bolt here one there and these uh the carburetor nuts here and a little plate and that should let us move this a little because i want to get down here at the carburetor and get that line off of there Let's see if we can get our pliers in there everything is on this machine is very very small tight Tight to work on. A little spring clip up, up the fuel line there, out of our way. Perhaps, give her a wiggle. Yeah, it's moving. Crack this loose. Okay, fuel hose should come off with the tank. I've got the four bolts out of the tank. So that's the tank with its sloshy stuff in there. We'll just set that to the side. We'll deal with that in a minute. I'm looking down into the feed for the carburetor. I'm not seeing much, uh, much junk in there. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. There's our kill switch wires. We'll just unplug them. More wires. Looks like this is the on-off switch for the power to make it actually make power. What else we got? We'll plug here. And the ground strap. We're just going to leave that on there. We don't need to move it. Yeah, that's just a breaker. This is your engine on and off. Okay. Wow. That's small. <laughs> spark plug boot is deteriorated to the point where it's just flaky it's not even really gripping the spark plug nothing is our governor the throttle plate in the carburetor is seized yeah seized solid so our throttle that's our choke butterfly at the front there and that's our throttle it's seized it won't even move it just moves if i force it to so the carb's coming off anyways we've got a mixture screw an engine speed screw and a drain screw here but we're gonna pull that carb should slide off of there right now it's just on studs so we can get it to 
just crack loose a little and we can work our governor rod out of there trying to shock it loose that's moving a little I don't want to break anything there we go it's sliding the gaskets might get destroyed doing this if they do I'll just have to make one wow tight tight fit on there Pull too hard on that governor arm. Yeah, there was a gasket behind there. It's not too good a shape, but it's there. Well, we might have to do some bending. But first, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and unthread these studs. I'll put two nuts on there, double nut them, jam them together, and uh, see if I can get them those studs to come out. Go to the metric department, grab a couple of uh, 10 millimeter nuts, a couple of 10 millimeter wrenches. I'm going to thread one on, follow up with another, tighten them together, Let's see if I can get that stud to turn, oh yeah it's coming right out, super easy, super easy, that's fine I don't want to bend any of the linkage up here, one stud, Second one should just be just as easy. Same as the first. Thread one nut on. Thread another one on. Tighten them together. Easy now. If you can fit the wrench in there, there we go. Yep, and it's loose. Well, that could have gone worse. <laughs> Just trying to crack them loose a little bit first before I get the stud all the way out. That way it's easier to get them off. Well, you might as well leave them on because I'll use those nuts to install the threads into the block. So we'll take our damper spring off the governor rod. Let's see what we can hear. I don't hear much rattling around in there. We should hear the flow going up and down. Well, we'll see. Pretty gummy. Let's pull that bowl knot off of there. Oh yeah, that's tight. As it hits the floor, come on! Ooh, she's tight. Probably hasn't been off in a very long time, if ever. It's like syrup in there. There's a little bit of mess in there. It's like I said, just like syrup. The needle is stuck, which is okay because it saved uh, all that crap from going down in there. Got a small jet here that everything is all going to be varnished, so it's going to have to go in the ultrasonic cleaner. A 
I'll have to replace that gasket because it ain't right. All right, let's get the. There's our reed valve in there. We'll have to scrape that, cut a new gasket for it. Actually, I got something that might might work. A little Tecumseh gasket might work on there. But I'll get the. I'm just gonna tear it down. You've seen 150 videos of me doing carburetors, so we'll pull that out. We'll get the emulsion tube out if we can get it out. We'll get the float off. We'll get the needle and seat all fixed up. And when it's clean, we'll come back. Stand by. Okay, so the carb's in the ultrasonic cleaner. And with this mic that I wear now, I can actually talk when the ultrasonic cleaner's on. And you can hear me. I pull the plug out, check for spark. It's got spark. So I'm going to drop a little bit of this two-stroke mix in there. Get a little squirt. We'll thread that plug back in there. And even with the carburetor off, if I give this thing a pull, it should fire. Let's thread that back in there real quick. Let's see if I have an, an equivalent to that plug to replace that with, because it's no good. But let's see what happens. Well, she fired. Well, that's a good sign. Let's do it again. <laughs> Let's do it again. Another little squirt of gas down there. Two stroke. Now, when I'm doing this, the the mix I use in this is 40 to 1, so it's got a little extra oil. This machine calls for 50 to 1. But it doesn't hurt to have a little extra oil in there for testing purposes. Okay. Give her another pull. It runs. That's good. Let's see if I have another boot I can replace that with. It's cracked real bad. And I'm going to have to cross reference this. <laughs> I'll have to cross reference this spark plug F5TC. That's very close to the torch plug set. I normally, normally replace in lawnmowers. F6, R, F6 RTC. This is the one I usually change. But you know what? It's not that bad. If I have... I, I'm going to look it up. If I have a direct replacement, then I will direct replace it. If not, then I will uh, just clean this one, gap it, throw it back in. Because it, it is sparking and running. So... We'll, we'll try that. We know it runs. Ultrasonic cleaner is still doing its thing. We're going to let that work. And I'm going to do some research. Okay, so the carb is out of its bath. And it's going together. The brass seat is pretty corroded on this. So in case you haven't seen it before, what I do is I just take a Q-tip, put it in a drill, put a little chrome and metal polish on it. And then I just... Give her a little shot in there, and it usually polishes that seat up real nice. Just to uh, make sure that needle... Oh, it broke off. Just make sure that needle seals on the seat nicely. That is perfect. Nice and shiny now. I would show you, but you can't see it. Camera doesn't go in that far. You don't see it. Give her a little shot of uh, carb clean to make sure all the polish is out. Yep. Now we can slide her back together. Everything's out of the ultrasonic cleaner and clean and ready to go. Get you spun around here real quick and we'll just do a just a quick and dirty where are you looking. I know there's stuff everywhere all over this bench. <laughs> Just got finished with the motorcycle. And I got other things I want to do, so instead of cleaning, I'm just carrying on. So this is a rubber tip needle. You can tell by the way it looks. It's got a rubber tip. Uh, this one happens to have a little spring-loaded plunger on the back. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to pick that up. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's that little plunger there. 
on the back is spring-loaded and it is important that they move this one's a little stiff it wasn't moving at all coming out of going into the ultrasonic cleaner it's a little stiff right now so I'm gonna just give her a little shot of carb clean again and just oh, moves nice and free now just gonna get that wire off to the side the retainer there you go that works nice and smooth now it is important that uh, if it is spring loaded like that it has to work they work they work better so let's get our float and everything assembled get on there oh it's a small carburetor let's get the needle sunk down in there we got our pin in there Here we go. Do a quick flow test. Yep, seems to work okay. Where's our little wee... This little jet is what allows fuel into the carburetor because the fuel bowl nut actually plugs it. So this has to be clear because that's what allows fuel to go up into the carburetor. Yes, I know it's the wrong screwdriver. Or is the correct one? Is this it? Yep, that works. Moves nice and free. Hopefully that gasket survived okay. Because I don't really have another one. Let's get that stuff put back together so we don't lose anything. 10 mil wrench, where are you? Where are you? There you are. Snug her down. Pilot jet is here. I've already pushed wire through it and carb cleaner and make sure that everything was good in it. It was completely plugged. Now it's fine. Thread that back in. I gotta find my proper screwdriver. This is not the right one. Okay, that's that. And this is just this is the speed screw, but it wasn't absolutely critical. I, I did count five turns out. So there's a half. One, two, three, four, five. Can't be right. Can't be right. Throttle doesn't even open that far. That won't mess with it when it's on the machine. That's fine. Where's our mixture? Screw. Mixture screw. Was one and a quarter turns. So I checked it before I took it out. So we'll lightly seat it. Like that, we'll go a uh, quarter, half, one, one and a quarter. That's where it was, and that's where it's going to start. So that's the idle screw. Generator doesn't idle anyway, so it doesn't matter. That controls how low the engine can run. Well, the engine doesn't run that low. The governor is set to run it wide open because that's what you need to run a generator. It has no idle down circuit, so it just runs wide open. Okay, that is good there. This little Tecumseh carb gasket is gonna work for us. I tested it already. I have to scrape this gasket off, and then we can get our carburetor put back on and the studs. So I'll swing you back over there. Where are you looking? You're close enough. Let's get you in just a little. Yeah. Razor blade. <coughs> get our scraper going. Get that gasket off of there. I'm holding it on a weird angle so nothing falls in it. There's no crazy vacuum ports and stuff on this one. It's just a 
flat flange. That's good. <coughs> so, there's our studs. I'm gonna get our governor linkage hooked up. The damper spring. There we go. Put a stud through here, through the gasket. We get it started in the engine. Okay. Our other stud started with fingers. And we can use the same double nut method that we used to remove it. We can use that to install it. Hopefully this gasket seals all the way around. I don't think it'll be a vacuum leak. I think it'll be okay. Uh, 10 millimeter wrench there. So we're just going to snug that down. It doesn't have to be stupid tight. Just snug. We can loosen this off again. Put those nuts onto this stud and run that one down. Tight enough. Just snug is good. Because remember, it gets nuts on the outside of this anyways. So it'll clamp everything together. I can't run it without the air cleaner on it. Or that front panel. Because that front panel is what the outside clamp sits on against that carburetor. So that gasket should be fine. That looks good. If it, if it doesn't work, I'll just put another one on it. We'll be able to tell anyways. So, let's get this situated back up there. I did find a replacement plug. It's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> BP5ES. B5ES, BP5ES. One of those. I did have one in stock, so on it on it went. I haven't changed the spark plug boot yet because I'm not overly concerned with it. There's our engine kill wires. Those two wires. There we go. It's against the carburetor. Got to leave it off just for a sec because I've got a temporary fuel tank rigged up here. Hopefully it works for us. Instead of doing all the cleaning and going through all the rubbish on the other tank. I'm just going to put this temporary tank on there and see what happens. Just an old snowblower tank. I like it because it's got a valve on it. I can shut it off, turn it on as needed. So I'm going to turn it on now and see if the carb overflows. Hopefully it doesn't. So the fuel is going in and the fuel stopped going in. That's ideal. That's what we want. We want it to fill the bowl and then stop. So I'm just going to set that over there. Get this front panel situated. Oh, choke lever. There we go. There's this. That plate on there. Get these two nuts on there. And we should be able to run it like that. We don't need to have the whole thing completely assembled. That should be tight enough. Mixture screw is almost impossible to get to when it's assembled, but I think with my long screwdriver, I'll be able to get in there. Well, I'll zoom you out. Give her a, oh, that's not out, that's in. Let's give her a couple of pulls, see what happens. Engine kill switch on position. Hopefully it's so dirty that I can't see it. Yeah, that's the that's the on position. Uh, look.
looks like that's closed. Oh, well, that's right there. Silly. You can see it. It's right there. <laughs> Chokes on, fuel's on. Spark plug is new, gapped, and the wire is on it. All our kill switches are there. Okay, let's see what happens. There's no primer bulb, so... sound like it on camera but it is my tack here and see what it's running at. Thirty-five fifty. Sure doesn't sound like it, but it's thirty-five fifty. Let's grab a three hundred watt lamp and see what happens when I turn it on. See if it stalls. <laughs> a little rich. I'll have to turn that back a little bit. Oh, it labored. But it worked. I should mention this is two-stroke gas. <laughs> it is two-stroke in there, so that's okay. Well, it runs. I want to, I'm gonna reset that idle mixture screw and see if I can get it to run a little better. But uh, I'm running out of gas in my temporary tank, so I gotta refill that, so back in a sec. Okay, so I got it running a little better. I uh, have my kilowatt meter in here. It's reading 60 hertz now, but it was about 58. It was pretty kind of low. So the way you adjust that is over here with this screw. It's on a spring-loaded arm, which pulls the governor's spring and runs it a little faster. So the mixture seems about right. We're at 60 hertz, 122 volts, and that's with a load on it. I got a 300 watt load on it. 800 watt regular running on this machine, so 300 watt load is almost half of what it's capable of. So that sounds about right for testing. Runs really good, actually. I'm just, I hope we can get that uh, fuel tank cleaned out. So let's shut her down. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let me get the garage door open. Now these meters are excellent for testing generators. Kilowatt. Okay, focus anytime now. There you go. Kilowatt. It'll give you the cycles and the voltage and everything, so that's good. That's good. Zoom you out. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna button this back together. Uh, well, no, I'm not. I gotta leave it loose so I can get a fuel line back in there. 
Okay, so I guess now it's on to the on to the fuel tank. So we can get that cleaned out. Weesh, that's not gonna be nice. I'll see what I can come up with and update you. Okay, so here's our update on that uh, fuel tank. Got it cleaned out. Uh, sand it down, primed, primed it, painted it. New fuel cap, new pack. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't do any of that. It, the other tank was so far gone, it actually had a pit in the bottom of it that was rotted through. So I jumped on uh, Evil Bay and bought a new tank for it. So they, I couldn't find one for this exact make, model, whatever. So I just did a little bit of research and I found that this tank is off a of Yamaha uh, E90, uh, ET91, EN91, something like that. It's a Yamaha model. And the dimensions are perfect. It fits perfectly on this unit. So, yeah. It runs great. I had my 300 watt load on there, that uh, halogen light. I put a splash of gas in it, ran it outside with that load on there and let it run until the tank went empty. And it was flawless, ran really, really good. Actually ran quite a while on just a little splash of gas. So it's nice and efficient. So anyways, I took a little bit of time and I just went over the, the front panel here with a silver Sharpie just to remark the things and so he knows what the controls are and uh, just cleaned it up general cleanup so we're gonna end this video here thanks for joining me guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe and if you do subscribe click that bell icon it'll notify you when i upload new videos and until the next one take care